Hi, we're today at Nokia World, and if you've been following the news lately, there's been a lot of reshuffling going on at the top. The CEO stepped down late last week, and just yesterday, the head of the mobile devices unit resigned. So a lot of sudden changes. What does that mean for the industry? I'm joined today with Ben Wood, who's the research director at CCS Insight. Ben, can you tell us what this means? Huge amount of turmoil coming into the most important event for Nokia this year. CEO going was something that had been anticipated. There'd been a lot of speculation, and I think Drawing a line under that was really, really good. But a bombshell yesterday morning with the resignation of Ansi Van Yocki, who's been one of the big inspirational frontmen for Nokia over the last 16 years and part of the original transformation team at Nokia under the former CEO, Jorma Olia. The phones that were announced are the mid-range C6, C7, and the high-end E7. Interesting mix. You know, the first thing is they've now got consistent software across all of the devices. The C6 for me is maybe the dark horse. It goes right into Nokia's homeland, an upgrade device for people who maybe have a Nokia 5800 today or the more conservative kind of traditional Nokia buyer. The C7, very interesting as well. Um, that's a product which is quite close to the N8 and I think the positioning of that and ranging of that inside network operators is going to be interesting. And then the E7 which is kind of the new flagship enterprise device building on Nokia's heritage of delivering QWERTY devices, an enormous four inch screen but a pretty hefty price tag to go with it as well. If I'm honest I have to say that they've caught up with iPhone and Android, but I think that's all they've done. I don't think Symbian 3 has really taken them forward against the competition. Let's talk about Migo. Migo basically was a new operating system that they announced at Mobile World Congress in February. It's uh, the combination of Intel's Moblin and Nokia's MIMO, which no longer exists. But they did announce that there won't be any product launches of Migo at Nokia World. What do you think by that? Yeah, that's a little bit disappointing, if I'm honest. I was really hoping that there would be some Migo announcement today. Uh, you know, they, they've said we'll have to wait until the end of the year. There will be something by the end of the year on Migo. Nokia's challenge is to get the agenda back onto the devices and you can see from the buzz here that you know Nokia is still here but no question they and the other big established mobile phone manufacturers were badly wrong footed by Apple and more recently Google and this is now the fight back building a foundation stone for them to get back into the smartphone business. At the keynote on day one of Nokia World, they said they're not going to apologize for not being Apple. They are Nokia and they are unique. But we're going to have to wait and see just how unique today's lineup of devices will be in the market and if the company's sudden reshuffling will help sustain its position as the number one handset manufacturer. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. I'm Leila Mackey, and see you next time.